So we have a, a sense then of the size of the cash flow that you talked about, this first factor that has to be adjusted for the compensation and for discretionary expenses and perhaps for one-time events. Now, what about the growth rates uh, for cash flow? Well, there, it's, it's, uh, there, there are several things that, you, that we look for, and that is uh, the first thing you want to look for is, is my, remember the cash flow, I'm looking, when, I'm, when we talk about growth, we're talking about projecting it forward or looking at it going forward, and that is, is my customer base growing? You know, are the number of customers that I'm selling to increasing over time or expected to increase? If it is, that's a positive for cash flow growth. Uh, even in many private businesses, because of the nature of the business, the regional nature of their business, they're not multinational corporations, that the, the client base might not grow, but products consumed or services consumed per client very well might. Uh, an example of this might be a dental practice, where the actual number of clients may not actually grow, but the services they're actually purchasing increases per client. So, so both of those would, would result in, ca in, in, in cash flow growth. And that has to do with things on the outside, if you will. That is, the outside market forces are changing, and that's going to have some impact on what your future cash flow is going to be. Now, internally, there are things you also can do, and that is you can become more efficient and more productive delivering the products and services. And if you can get more profit per dollar of sales, then your cash flow is going to grow over time. One of the things we've noticed uh, with many private businesses is that they're not as efficient as they need to be. There, there, there are several things they can typically do to increase their efficiency and productivity, which, interestingly enough, they don't do, which would actually increase their cash flow even without increasing the number of clients they serve or the number of products and services they're actually selling per client. Now, in terms of projecting in the future, uh, obviously that's a subjective activity at some level. Uh, how do you approach that to provide some intellectual rigor or academic discipline to that type of activity? Sure. Uh, well, first, like I said, uh, valuation is about the future. It's not about the past. Uh, so what you really have to be able to do is kind of look at the economy and the industry this firm is going to operate in the future and make some assessment as to how that's going to impact the firm's cash flow. Now, what we have done at Axiom, but I, I, this is not something that we only do, but uh, is that we have looked at industries uh, in, in, in a great deal of detail. In fact, we cover about 1,000 industries across a variety of, uh, uh, of SIC codes or uh, North American Industrial Classification Codes, so they're pretty in-depth. And we've segmented these industries by growth, if you will. In other words, we, we looked at the industry and we said, you know, uh, for every industry, there are a few companies that are at the top. There are a few companies. Th there are a couple of companies at the uh, in the middle, and then there are a lot of companies at the bottom. And every industry you look at, manufacturing services has this this ca kind of characteristic. So what we've done is built models that allow us to determine for any target company we're valuing which one of the paths they should be on based on their, the characteristics of the company. And the characteristics of the company might be things like uh, what the past investments have been. Are they investing in information technology? Uh, do they have inventory systems that uh, result in increasing efficiency over time? Things of that nature. And that allows us to put, to put the, uh, the, these firms on, a, on what we call a path. And we know from, from academic research that s at least 60% of the earnings potential, the cash flow growth variability and potential in any particular company is a function of two things. It's a function of the economy and what the economy is going to do. So, for an example, if the, if the overall economy is in a recession or a depression, it's hard mm -hmm. to expect a company at that point to do very well, though there are some that, that will. And, of course, how well the industry is doing. Now, if you, and, of course, even when an industry is doing poorly, and there are many industries that are doing poorly in a very good economy, there are segments in that industry that are doing well. So we have to figure out what the segment is, where they fit, and what path they're on, what growth path they're on. Now, for many companies, uh, and, and how the economy is doing, that, that's the, the, the primary determinants. And we have classic, what we call classic industry cash flow projection models that have been used for years to do this kind of thing at Axiom. Uh, the other thing is that for many private firms, cash flow doesn't grow. It, it just basically has no, shows no growth at all. And for those firms where that's the case, they typically are uh, using the, the term in finance. They're more like cash cows. They just, there's no investment going on. They have a niche in their marketplace. The marketplace could be regional, 
uh, could be a niche in, in, their, in their industry. They're not growing. They don't expect to grow. They're not heavily investing. In fact, they might not even be, they're not investing at all except maybe replacing worn out capital. And they are, they're basically generating a lot of cash. And there, it's simply, that's the cash after our adjustments that we capitalize, if you will, to get the value. But even in that case, and this is often, I think, uh, uh, misunderstood, even when we say the cash flow is not going to grow, what we mean by that is that the cash flow today is going to be, uh, is going to be the same as a cash flow tomorrow and the following year and so on. Now, that is a forecast because it might not be that. So just because growth, it's, it's, so you can think of growth as being a projection and a forecast, but also if you're assuming that the cash flow is staying constant, that's also a forecast. 